Hello, welcome back. In the next video, in the module one of uh, Databricks that we are uh, bringing up is uh, related to creating and managing the clusters. So whenever uh, we are talking about cluster in Databricks, uh, it is nothing but a compute compute engine. Uh, so this compute engine will give uh, actually the computing uh, power to the jobs that you are running in Databricks, right? So we need to understand how do we create and manage these clusters and uh, using the UI that Databricks provides us uh, so that uh, we can comfortably know the options like uh, different options uh, like uh, to when we are creating the clusters uh, and please note that when we are talking about clusters uh, so there are two different types of clusters in Databricks as we have explained in the previous video so I would recommend you to please uh, watch the previous videos uh, to understand the different types of clusters uh, where we have explained uh, but uh, before, uh, in this uh, video we are explaining more of the, about the interactive cluster in Databricks. So before proceeding if you are new to this channel and have not subscribed for this channel uh, we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications. So let's get started. So before actually uh, going to the demo where we kind of uh, understand uh, the different options that we have to uh, have in the Databricks UI to create a cluster. So, so let us un understand theoretically what the Databricks cluster actually means, right? So as a definition by Databricks, it, it simply means the set of computation resources. That means, uh, so Databricks is providing us a set of computer resources. That means uh, it might be uh, uh, virtual machines they are bringing up in the background and they are providing the compute resource for us. But uh, so this resource uh, actually are hosted in the uh, the cloud resource that you are using. If you are using Azure, if you are using AWS or uh, Google Cloud, so whatever the cloud vendor that you are using, uh, so this will be charged based on, based on that uh, subscriptions that you are taken from, and uh, the configuration on which uh, you are running the data. I mean, the main thing is what exactly you want to run uh, in the Databricks, right? You are writing a code as a data engineer or a data scientist or a data anal analytics, uh, if you're doing any analysis work, right? So for all this purpose, you need a Databricks cluster, whether you are a data engineer, data scientist or a data analytics, data analysis, but uh, still uh, you need a compute power for uh, doing all these activities, right? So that's what we are, we are talking about the compute power and for that compute power you need a cluster and a cluster is nothing but uh, as uh, simply we can explain it will be set of uh, machines uh, that are uh, one or more machines basically that will be kind of a create one cluster right so based on if you are choosing a basic cluster it might be hosted in one virtual machine but if you are choosing like uh, eight workers or ten workers uh, cluster right so then it might be a might be hosting uh, that many number of virtual machines in the background uh, based on the configurations uh, so that you do you do not worry but end of the day what you can understand is uh, whatever you want to do in uh, Databricks uh, as a data engineer or uh, data analyst or data scientist uh, whatever jobs that you are running as a data scientist you might run ML jobs as a data engineer you are uh, maybe reading a file or transforming a file uh, different file formats that you are working as a data analyst you might be checking different uh, business scenarios uh, and uh, also checking uh, different uh, different data scenarios basically right so to do anything uh, you would need a cluster so that is a it's a simple thing to understand uh, what, what why we need the databricks cluster right and uh, so basically it can be in the name of a production pipeline or you might be using a streaming like a real-time jobs or you might run a ad hoc jobs right or a machine learning jobs so for everything you would need a databricks cluster because everything needs a computer right and for a different purpose you you might use a different uh, configuration of a cluster and there will be cost uh, similarly associated with that uh, based on your requirement that we can uh, see in the demo but uh, so what exactly you are doing uh, using this cluster is you run these workloads whatever these workloads we are talking right ETL pipeline streaming ad hoc jobs or uh, machine learning you run these uh, basically the workloads as a set of commands 
that means uh, you create a program which is a set of lines uh, different lines maybe you you choose a programming language as python or like say scala or r so whatever programming languages you are choosing uh, you will write a sequence of uh, like uh, commands and that we call it as a notebook and this notebook will run as an automated job and uh, as uh, we were telling right so this scope of this video is uh, creating the interactive job but, but at a high level uh, there are two kinds of uh, clusters uh, one is all purpose cluster or we can al also call it as the interactive cluster and another one is a job cluster so we are not explaining about the job cluster because uh, the creation of the job cluster is completely a dynamic and uh, we have explained this in the previous video if you are uh, not seen the previous video in the uh, playlist I, I would recommend you to please watch uh, the previous videos where we have explained the difference but uh, here what we are talking about is uh, creating the interactive cluster and we can only create an interactive cluster because job cluster anyway it will be automatically created right and uh, so basically what we are targeting in this demo is how do we create the create or edit or basically manage the cluster and upscaling and downscaling the cluster and also how do we start restart or stop the interactive cluster jobs right so these are the options that we will see in the uh, upcoming demo now let us quickly jump to the actual demo where we will see the creation of the cluster and the different options that we see while we do that Right. So as you log into the Databricks workspace, uh, this is where you will land. Uh, and uh, if you go to the left side pane here, uh, and if you can see, there is a compute here option. And if you can click the compute option, you see all the clusters accessible by me and uh, created by me. And, uh, so basically, all the clusters uh, that is created and accessible by by me basically you can apply the filter here. And also, you can see like an option to create cluster here and you can see if there is any job cluster currently running also right so here uh, there is an option uh, where uh, you can create a cluster and uh, so when you are uh, demo purpose if you see right uh, it is always recommended to use a single node cluster because uh, it is of a less less cost right so if you click on a single node cluster as you can observe the main thing is there will be no work there will be no like worker or uh, Basically, if you choose a multi-node, there is a worker and uh, there is a also a driver. Basically, driver is like a master and worker is a uh, like a child, right? So there will be always only one driver and multiple workers. So as you can see, driver there is no option to choose the number of drivers, but workers you have option to choose the number of workers. You can increase, decrease, whatever you want to do, right? You can uh, play around with the number of workers. But if you choose uh, like a single node cluster, so then if you choose a single node cluster, so then there is uh, no option uh, basically that comes up uh, with respect to the choosing the number of workers because it is only one one node basically that we are talking right. So it's always recommended to use a single node cluster, and uh, when you are doing it, uh, so whether you choose a single node cluster or a multi node cluster, uh, so you have to give the runtime version. So runtime version is nothing but it's a spark uh, version you can choose uh, is a databricks version basically but uh, as you can see the previous older version is uh, like it will say what is the scala version and what is the spark version so based on your uh, jobs that you are work using or based on the libraries that you are using right so you can choose which is a suitable uh, uh, runtime uh, that you might uh, use here okay it's always recommended to use uh, the most latest version but avoid using uh, beta versions because uh, it's a most recent version right there might be some uh, issues okay so you can choose like 11.2 or something and uh, so use photon accelerator so this is again it will charge uh, additional if you are using some uh, if you want to use some uh, production like scenario where you want to kind of use this option to reduce the total uh, cost of the workload right so you can choose this but uh, as a demo purpose again we would not recommend you, you using it okay and also the next important thing is uh, choosing uh, the actual uh, versions of a cluster node type right basically this is like a package they have created uh, and this package is associated with the cost right so first if you see the category like general purpose is there and uh, there are like uh, delta cached accelerator 
okay and uh, you, see, you can see memory optimized so actually we will not go in detail about all these options uh, maybe we can cover it cover it up in detail in uh, further videos uh, but uh, to just a uh, like high level right so there are different options uh, that you can choose uh, if your uh, job is a memory intensive if your job is a say uh, like a cpu intensive right so based on that uh, you can uh, you can choose and there is a con concept of delta tables or delta lake uh, based on that uh, if you are using that and you want to have a good performance uh, you can choose that kind of clusters uh, but uh, if you are using a normal jobs or a demo purpose right so you can just go with the general purpose uh, we would recommend and uh, so the higher the version that you use uh, you will be charged accordingly so you can refer the microsoft uh, sorry microsoft azure uh, databricks documentation uh, to kind of uh, see what is the cost associated with uh, each of these but uh, yeah for the demo purpose nothing to worry you can choose the most uh, the less uh, memory whichever you have right and you can proceed and uh, there is a terminate option like uh, where this is basically useful when you are using uh, for a development and uh, you forget to uh, stop the cluster right you might be charged uh, based on the number of hour that is running so it is ideal to give this uh, number uh, in some minutes like 30 minutes or 60 minutes so that uh, you save the cost and your cluster will be down after this number of uh, inactivity if you are not doing anything in, if you are not using anything in this workspace using the cluster right so then uh, your cluster will automatically go down and right? save the cost so yeah quickly covering up the multi node cluster also right so as you can see when you select a multi node cluster uh, there will be only one driver type and you can separately choose the uh, option of uh, which kind of a cluster you want for driver and which kind of cluster you want for worker but uh, so the main thing is the choosing the number of workers right if you increase the number of workers definitely as you can see here in the summary it will actually uh, increase the memory and course accordingly right it is uh, just multiplies this memory with the number of workers and uh, uh, but uh, Please note that driver will always be one. That, that's the important thing, right? And uh, uh, if you want to uh, choose any tags, uh, right? So you can give the tags here. So and uh, main thing is like coming down. Uh, there is an advanced option here, where exactly you can uh, kind of give all these uh, details. Like uh, the important thing is uh, if you are using some any kind of a. Uh, uh, configuration that you want to uh, run with respect to whenever a cluster started right you can give those codes here uh, if you are if you don't want to give the lines as uh, as a code right so you can all i mean you can even uh, like upload the script uh, basically which has those lines uh, which will uh, these are the init script what we call right to prep the uh, cluster uh, with any kind of uh, configurations uh, you want to set up or any kind of libraries that you want to install right so those kind of things you can give here and if you want to enable logging you can enable the logging and give the dbfs path uh, so the all the cluster logs will be stored in that dbfs path right so these are the main options uh, we could think of and uh, coming back to the clusters again so uh, if you have and then if you click on a cluster and uh, so there are different op options like here you can see what are the different notebooks that are using it and uh, what are the different libraries that is installed right and uh, what is the event log so is, whether the cluster is healthy or is it running or if it is restart all the history will be stored here so this will be easy or it will come handy when the when you want to monitor the cluster health right and uh, so main thing i want to concentrate here is uh, related to the logs you can also check the logs uh, if there is any out of memory exceptions or any kind of uh, exceptions right so you can get that but important thing is here if you go to the metrics it will give the ganglia chart a ganglia ui so if you click on that uh, it will take you to the UI where you can uh, pretty much uh, monitor that uh, CPU utilization if anything has gone up or gone down. Basically, uh, you can uh, check that using using the ganglia chart. So uh, in that, uh, usually it will show the CPU and uh, memory how much it is utilized in runtime. So you can monitor that very closely using this uh, ganglia UI. And also, if you want to like stop the cluster, there's an option to stop here. And uh, once you stop it, there will be another option to restart that also. 
like uh, here you can see click terminate uh, you can click on terminate to stop it or you can like restart or uh, clone even clone the cluster here or uh, and there is option of deletion but uh, only uh, provided you have access to all do all those things you will be able to do that if you don't have access you will not be able to do that so because you need to be admin of the databricks workspace hope uh, you are able to understand now how exactly you can uh, create the cluster in databricks and uh, so basically use all the different options that we have uh, in the the ui of the databricks uh, to manage and maintain the databricks cluster hope it is useful thanks for watching